We are here at the Maker Camp here in the Catskill Mountains, and I'm here with Chris Ewing at the Lincoln Electric Welding Tent. People are going to learn how to weld for the first time, correct? They are indeed. Never shot sparks before? Let's control some chaos in there. Well, let's go check out the tent first. Absolutely. First and foremost, anytime you're ever around anything industrial, weld shop, or even really just changing the oil in your car, you should have safety glasses on. Make sure they're Z87 plus rated. Yes, you even need the, the glasses on underneath your hood. Spark spatter stuff is always getting inside the hood while you're welding. Next up, everybody loves the weld hood. So if you're unfamiliar, back in the day, you used to see the welders doing the hood flick. We still do that, but it was because we couldn't see anything until we started welding. So we wanted to get right into place, almost start welding, hood down, then weld. Now I can see through these like a dark pair of sunglasses. Yeah. Right? What about our arms? We got a couple of options here. We've got some traditional sleeves and then we have some leather sleeves. If you're already wearing an FR shirt or a cotton or a wool shirt and it's 110 degrees inside the shop, you can just slide those sleeves on, keep you protected from the sparks, the spatter, the UV radiation, that kind of stuff. The more traditional option is definitely the welding jacket. So these are FR, flame resistant or flame retardant, and they're made with natural materials, so usually a cotton that's been treated with that kind of stuff. That's all you need, huh? Realistically, that is kind of that, that minimum. <laughs> Phalange covers. I guess you need those too, right? Well, let's go check out that side. Let's see yeah, the other side. So we are going to wear some gloves while we're in there. There are a couple of hazards that you need to be aware of. There is the sparks and spatter that you can see. There's also the light that we can see and the UV radiation that we don't see that is all damaging to your hands. So you do want to have a nice pair of welding gloves. Depending on what process you're using and what your preferences are, there's a thousand thousand different types. They should be a high quality flame retardant material. Most of them are a leather so you have mig gloves tig gloves stick welding gloves and laser welding gloves laser too. welding gloves so you find the ones that you like and you'll stay safe this is the setup for today can you run us through what we're using today we're going to be operating the power mig 215 mpis while they are multi-process machines we're just doing mig welding you get 20 minutes in the booth at a time so 20 minutes is hardly enough time for a first timer to be proficient at tig probably going to be just sticking a rod non-stop for 20 minutes if you did stick so mig welding is uh, an honest good place to jump in we're running what kind of gas so we got 75 25 that's 75 percent argon 25 percent co2 even though we're outdoors we got lincoln's mini extractors so this little guy yep these what are, do we got going on here? These are really nice little portable booths. So here we are actually screening, uh, filtering the light so nobody outside is going to get injured at all, no arc flash. Here we have our MIG gun. So our MIG gun, when we pull the trigger, that's where we get our electricity, our gas, and our filler material all come out at the same time. It's always nice to have some wire brushes nearby, clean off your material. This is a welder's best friend, especially while you're MIG welding. We refer to these as whelpers. Uh, we have our wire snips. We have our needle nose pliers. We can clean out the inside of our MIG gun with it. So it's basically just a welder's multi-tool. It's like a Swiss Army knife. And then we have a fancy little uh, little magnet. If we need to hold some parts square, we can attach a magnet to it, set it upright, tack it together, pull the magnet off before you weld with it, or you'll melt your magnet material. But this is what we're working with here today. Sweet. Campers were given a safety briefing, then an overview of the equipment they would be using for the day. Once they had all of their PPE on and had an understanding of using the equipment, they could pick out a few different options for projects they could learn to weld on. Before they could weld these pieces though, they had to knock off the dross because welding over dross can lead to contamination in your weld, like porosity. So right now, everybody is in here trying MIG welding for the first time, and there's a bunch of things that you might do wrong the first time you MIG weld. The most common would have to be contact tip to work distance being too long, or in simple terms, being too far away. This is bad for a number of reasons, from having a decrease in your amperage, leading to cold welds, you'll start losing shielding gas, which will give you porosity, and it'll create a lot of spatter and cold wire. Don't even get me started on the lack of penetration. Another common problem people have is not being able to see the puddle. When you line up to make a MIG weld, a lot of people will be looking directly down at the MIG gun. But what you want to do is get your head over to the side, left if you're traveling left, and right if you're traveling right. Not only can you see your puddle, but you'll have a better view of where you're going and your work angle. 
The last common problem would be moving too fast. A lot of people, when you make that first puddle, have the instinct to just take off, leaving you with a stringy or ropey bead, which sometimes will even have lack of fusion. When you're first starting off, you want to remember to make a puddle before you move a puddle. And you keep the bead size the same across the plate by how fast or slow you move. After people had had a chance to weld, we caught up with a few campers to hear what their reactions were. What did you think? It was amazing, and I have a lot more respect for people who weld. It's definitely an art. It was a lot easier than I expected it to be. Making sure you keep that distance um, away from the piece seems like the biggest piece of the equation. It is addicting, and now I want a full setup. <laughs> so cool! It's like you're watching the Predator movie and you see everything in infrared because all you can see is the welding. You can't see anything else. It's pitch black and it's like neon green. Have you ever tried MIG welding before? Never. So what did you think? Well, I thought I was just terrible at welding at first and it ended up being the welder's fault. The MIG gun didn't have the shielding gas coming out of it. So I was just playing on hard mode. And then they swapped out the MIG gun and I got some nice clean welds. What was the hardest part? Not making holes. Uh -huh. Staying close, staying steady, pretty much all of it was was pretty difficult. And seeing through the, the dark. Making sure that I kept that consistent straight line down through and pacing and making sure that I'm not getting ahead um, or behind. Trying to get the right speed down so I can have a nice little caterpillar instead of a bumpy caterpillar. All of the things. Just balancing all of the things, I'd say. Yeah, you got to think about a lot of things at the same time. The hardest part, probably pushing through this first one because what a good weld looks like, what a bad weld looks like, I just don't even know what I don't know. And what kind of stuff do you make? I make tables. I make um, some desks, I make some cutting boards, stuff like that. I want to be able to incorporate table legs both metal, so I was very much interested in this. I do a little bit of flux core, but eh. Do you make anything? Cause I'm a woodworker. I don't work with metal unless it's very thin. It's hey, fun. but you can make legs for your stuff soon. Now I'm going to. Everything's, I love doing everything in-house if I can, so now I can. You're going to see Easy. some welding on my pieces now. Never ever would have even thought of it as an option now that I know like a little bit of what's involved. It's like it's on the table now. Do you think you're going to try it again? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm making another one. This is round one. It's my first ever good welds. And if you can get past that initial fear of when I squeeze this trigger, something's gonna happen, you can weld. Find yourself a local school, a training facility, ton of weld.com videos, get yourself a welder, marketplace, harbor freight to start out. Just to start something in your garage, you know? The barrier to entry is only you. So get out there and try it today. I do a little bit of flux core, but eh, it's not quite what you know what I was looking for. So the the MIG obviously is where I wanted to be. <laughs> Your grandpa is probably not the best option. He can stick it together. <laughs>